Hi everyone, it's Alfred. Welcome back to 300 Second Crap. This episode, um, I'm Googling, no I'm not, I'm covering how these awful channels pander to their audiences. Because uh, they know that kids have so much free time and more iPhones than they should really deserve. My brother has an iPhone. He's like six. And granted, yes, it doesn't have service and it's really just a hand-me-down from his mom. But like, take that away from him. You know, give him wood. That's what we had in my day. You know, my best friend was a cactus. I grew up in Arizona. In the war against Gila monsters, cactuses were my greatest ally. Don't get me started on scorpions. Um, yeah, this is 24 school hacks you wish you knew sooner. And, you know, if the TikTok generation needs any more help being more dislikable... <laughs> then I'm sure this video will be a nail in the coffin. All right. Someone's got a Coca-Cola. They're writing. It has to be Coca-Cola brand. They're writing equations on the outside in black permanent marker. And then when you turn it upside down, that's clearly an old man. Uh, you have the answers to a test. Um, do they allow that flagrant of cheating? All right. Some idiots doing a Fortnite dance. Oh, boy. Yeah, some idiot's doing a Fortnite dance in in school at their desk, and they get their test back, and it's a bad grade. And these are both clearly grown women. But she takes a piece of masking tape and uses it to scratch out the F and write in an A in clearly different handwriting in a different pen. Okay, so the, the F is written in... Oh, boy. This is stupid. So the F is written in colored pencil. And there's a circle around it. The woman only erases the F using masking tape. And then writes in an A with a red pen. So, you know. But the thing is, there... That doesn't help anyone. That just makes it look good. And also, if you got an F on a test, if you are dumb enough to get an F on a test in today's era of homogenized classes and things being dumbed down so everyone can be a C average. I don't even think C is average anymore. I haven't been in school in a while. You know, apparently unlike these people who are very clearly grown-ass women. <laughs> um... But everything's all in computers now. So putting changing the letter grade on your paper test will help you for maybe a day until you go back home and show it to your mom. And then maybe, you know, she might just look at that and be like, oh, whatever, back to my beer and cigarettes, you know. But if you have a parent who actually cares, they will look and say, here you've written and uh, you've said that one and three do not make four, but in fact they make 18. Uh, how did you get an A plus that would require that you got every single question right? And the first question alone, you have not. If you are so dumb to his, to have gotten an F on a test and then you write in an A, an A plus, that's the biggest, boldest, facedest lie. And then everything's in the computer anyway. So all that you're actually doing for yourself is proving that not only are you an idiot, but you're also dishonest because your parents will see, you know, 20 A plus papers from you. And then turns out you have to repeat the grade you're in because all you did was change the face of something broken. You know, you put a new hat on a corpse. He's not, he's not walking around. You know, Grandpa's still in that coffin. You didn't change anything. You just put a new hat on him. Uh, so then she smugly shows this test to her uh, partner in class. I'm going to assume that this is a very hetero production. All right. Someone is cut open an eraser with an X-Acto knife, and they put a tiny piece of graph paper in there, and then they wrote some more equations on there. Uh, by the looks of it, the same equations that were actually on the Coke bottle. 
oh, it's the same idiot. She's like, oh, well. And then she very obviously takes her eraser out of her little bag and copies down all the equations and then obviously puts it back in her bag, hands in her test, and smugly smiles and nods. All right, this idiot's trying to write on paper and her pen's running out of ink. Hair dryer. She's running the hair dryer over the pen. Is this for school? Do people have hair dryers at school? I assume some people do because they're that extra, but like, I have to pause it. I assume these are for like elementary and middle schoolers because, you know, they're very homogenized. They're very bland. Uh, it, uh, this is, this is dumb. Like, what kid is going to have a hair dryer in their bag ready to go for when their pen runs out in the middle of class? It's not going to be considered a disruption or anything? Like, what? Anyway, this girl has a, a pink backpack and it looks like a blue pen broke open inside of it. Cooking paper. So they put some duct tape over some butch paper until it's a giant sheet. All right. And then they've drawn a goo design on it with pen. And then they peel the butch paper off of it. And then they tape it down to their backpack. And then with spray paint, spray paint isn't exactly the healthiest thing in the world, you know. They've just sprayed silver all over their backpack. And now they have, now they've covered up the stain by making a worse one. Like, wouldn't spray paint just smell incredibly toxic? All right, they've got a grocery bag or a sandwich bag or something. And they're just doing that thing where you cut and fold the sandwich bag or grocery bag over your, over your book to make the book last longer or whatever. I've seen this. We know what it is. It's not new. It's not a hack. And most, some teachers like demand you do this. All right. This idiot's trying to balance his phone up in class. Do they allow you to do that? I assume some teachers are going to be pretty liberal, liberal about it. Um, and of course he's watching five minute crafts in what appears to be Facebook, but he's uh, unbent a pen. Uh, uh, he's unbent a paperclip to use as a phone stand because he's so addicted to five minute crafts in this hell that he lives in. All right, two idiot girls are loudly eating chips. And then the teacher yells at them. And then one of the girls, like, nods. The girl just burrows her pen through one side of the chips and then slides it between their desks. And now it's just underneath the desks. But they're still obviously getting chips. Like, is the teacher looking at them high-fiving and being very suspicious? And I'm pausing it again. Is the teacher going to look at these people... These grown women again, by the way. It's the same grown women, I think. Like, looking at these women eating chips, high-fiving each other because of their successful ploy. And she's like, well, I don't see a chip bag. I guess I can't bust them. Like, those chips aren't coming from nowhere. And also, they're right underneath the desk. You can still see the chip bag. Like, what the hell? Whatever. All right. This person's trying to erase something that they wrote down. The acting in this is so unsubtle. Oh, they're just putting their eraser on their pencil into a pencil sharpener. I've done that, dude. You're not special. They're writing about foods. Nice handwriting, idiot. All right. A teacher has another grown woman come up. And then another one comes up. Oh, they can't figure out their multiplication tables for nine. And then she's written zero through eight eight all the way down to the bottom and then one through nine all the way up to the top and this teacher takes off his glasses like wow i've never seen that aren't you a math teacher a math teacher does not know like the nines multiplication table is one of the more like well-known ones just because it's so there's so many ways to teach it like there's that one way what's that one thing bavarian hand magic or something and there's like Oh, just remember that, like, they all added nine or whatever. Or, like, this math teacher hasn't seen that, really? 
But also, I don't know if that one actually helps. And granted, yes, it's just multiplication, but just remembering that they go in order is not really learning that these numbers multiply to make nine, you know? Learning that you write an eight and then a one is not really the same thing as learning that nine nines make 81. And it's one of these things where like, yes, you've made it easier for people to pass classes, but you haven't actually let them learn anything. And so the actual reason that we had tests was not so people pass them. It's so that we can see if they've learned or not. And the, the fact that this channel like kind of confirms that sort of behavior and does that is why it's so needless. It's such a sink, you know, it just exists to make more of itself. And it glorifies this behavior like the, the teacher takes off his glasses and he's all impressed at this grown woman who just, you know, couldn't solve multiplication normally and had to use a cheat to do it. But like, these people should be considered cool. Someone's got a pen. They take on an exacto knife and a tea light candle again, and they use the tea light candle to heat up the, the knife and cut into the pen. Okay, that's not really... Uh, I don't really think that that would be particularly allowed during a class. But anyway, they used it to hide a tiny scroll of geometry. Or what is that? Fractions? I can't really see it. Anyway, somebody it's cutting felt with those giant ugly scissors. Or possibly thick paper. Got a paper clip. Put a paper clip in the in the things of their binder. And now they've made a little tab so you can flip to certain parts of your notebook. And you have an all-in-one notebook. Okay, here okay, I've had all-in-one notebooks. Like I I've had all-in-one notebooks. They don't they're they're not actually great. What you actually have is you have one notebook that fills up five times as fast. It's not really ideal. Just get more notebooks. I have probably a couple hundred notebooks. Um, and granted, that's just a me thing. Uh, someone was selling notebooks. There was a back to school sale and then uh, not enough people bought it. And then back to school was over. So they're like, we got to get rid of all these notebooks. And they sold them for like four cents each. And I bought like, I was going to buy a couple hundred, but I think my wife haggled me down to just like 40 so I just have a bunch of notebooks. Anyway, uh, what appears to be the same teacher is looking at a grown ass man and he's like, hey, come solve these some come solve these equations. And the guy writes one 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 two 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 three 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 four 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 five five five. Number of the beast, lucky sevens, eight 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 nine nine nine. And the teacher gives him a thumbs up. Um that's great, but that's only because that's actually what those all equate to. That's not a hack. That's just, hey, he solved the problems very quickly because he figured out that the teacher was just giving him a test or something. What was the point of that? Ugh, whatever. All right, someone's got a notebook. They're drawing on the cover. All over the cover, in fact. And then with alcohol, they've rubbed out the pen. So you can see the imprint of a bunch of equations, especially in the light. Okay, teacher's handing back papers. Some idiot got a C minus. Okay, let's see how he gets out of this one. And again, this has the same thing of like, oh, don't worry, I'll just change my grade. And then it'll look like I'm smart until... Either I get revealed as an idiot or someone asks me to do something incredibly basic and because I just learn how to cheat instead of learning how to actually do it. I, I've unpaused it now, by the way. All right. This kid got a C. This kid got an F. This kid got a D minus. They all look at each other and nod. All right. He's drawn an A in the little... Oh, boy. So he's drawn an A inside of the C and then he completed the C and turned the minus into... A plus so it looks like hold on wait yeah c minus draw a little a inside the c with a little marker 
and then a plus. Why would the plus be outside the circle? The kid with a D just did the same thing. And then the girl just wrote an A in there and turned the top little mark on the F into a plus. And again, like either your actual report card at the end of year is going to say, hey, this kid's an idiot. Okay. Someone's covered their angle ruler on in equations and then the tooltip says easy to hide and again just like you know it might be good to remember those all right someone's had someone has an incredibly overcomplicated system wherein they rigged up a whole bunch of <laughs> oh my god hold on i've got to back up okay this 38-year-old man and his 38-year-old dad are clearly having a thing. But this dude rigged up a system wherein a rope is attached to his Apple brand iPhone. And the rope attaches to a, a complex system of levers and pulleys. And when the door is open, it pulls the iPhone out of his hand. And then in the example, the... The 38-year-old man's 38-year-old dad, I'm skipping back to watch this, slowly opens the door to allow the phone to noisily clink out of sight so it looks like the boy is uh, using his all-in-one notebook. Hey, if your parent knocks, you have time to get rid of your phone. If your parent just opens doors, you're out of luck, buddy. And also, if your parent just swings that door open, what's going to happen to your phone? Like, it's going to get slingshotted all the way to hell. And also, this dude has enough time to let his phone get pulled out of his hand and then slowly pick up his notebook, and then it looks like he's studying. Uh, not really how it works. It's got a very obvious picture of Spider-Man. Oh, can I, can I call Disney and be like, hey, they've got your shit, dude? I better not. Ugh, whatever. And then it says mischief managed and he gives a little okay sign. Okay, kid's got a box cutter. And then they draw some equations. And they hide it inside where the blade lives in the box cutter. Okay, this 40-year-old dude is like, oh no, I don't know the answer. Pulls out a, a box cutter in the middle of his test and looks at the equations inside the box cutter. No, dude, you can't whip out a knife in the middle of a test. I just want, okay, so a lot of people have been showing like math hack videos, you know, to pander to children to get them to watch. One of them has uh, two people like doing the, the, the thing I discussed earlier where they just do the nines multiplication table by just going down the list. Uh, one, but the, the one I'm thinking of has pumped up kicks playing you know like that that like trash pop remix of pumped up kicks who in their right mind allowed anyone ever since the dawn of mankind to play pumped up kicks in any sort of school setting like either that song is literally about school shootings or alludes to school shootings or possibly mass shootings don't play pumped up kicks if you want to simulate a school. You know, that song's an art piece about violence in America. Don't play it in schools, bro. I want to Google the lyrics now just because I feel like I'm wrong. You know, I'm second guessing myself. Here you go. Pumped up kicks. I type in pump, you get pumpkin, and right below it, pumped up kicks. All right. 2010 wow the song is newer than i think i guess foster the people isn't that old yeah upbeat musical contra composition co contrasted with the homicidal thoughts of a troubled youth it's a sleeper hit <laughs> uh let me see internal dialogue of a kid he doesn't have anywhere to turn outrun my gun faster than a bullet homicidal thought uh, growing trend. Okay, so it's about the growing trend of teenage mental illness. Bring awareness to gun violence. Yep, 
a lot of it's uh, based off of youth violence. The Columbine High School Massacre of 1999 is name dropped on this. Um, <laughs> for playing it on television channels or other radios, uh, they removed gun and bullet from the chorus, which is kind of weird. Yeah, that's why do they do that? Uh, anyway, yeah, it's got a radio band after Sandy Hook because, of course, it was using a lot of popular media, whatever. The point of it is that don't use that in a school setting. And I know that that's not even in this video, but I really just wanted to share it because a lot of people see stuff and they're like, oh, let's sell this to Americans. And they just kind of slur it all together. And by that, I, of course, include Americans in that because a lot of American like diplomats and business people have no idea what people actually want. You know, that's how we got the movie Captain Marvel. That's why we got a Black Widow TV show. <sighs> Cripes. All right. This kid's unfolding a. <sighs> OK, so he unfolded a little. A tiny little... Hold on. Let me back up here. Okay, that's the exacto knife hack. Okay, so this kid is trying to have his backpack on his desk. It's got a five-minute craft logo on it. Takes out a little... A tiny little paper clip and hangs his backpack from his desk. Paper clips are not titanium, bro. You can't really rely on them for anything. Oh, dear. Okay, someone's got their... What is that? A Samsung brand phone. Take out a craft knife. They outline their phone in a notebook and then they cut out all the middle of the pages of the notebook. All right. This teacher who is younger than the student comes over and looks over this kid's shoulder. Oh boy. Okay. I've got to skip it back because the next one's even dumber. She looks over this kid's shoulder, nods, and he smirks and turns his notebook to the next page where it is playing da -da, a five minute craft video in the hell that these people live in of this unspecified channel that I watch because I don't want to get sued. All right. Ugh, this is the dumbest. All right. This kid in a yellow sweater has put his phone case into the sweater of a girl in front of him. And then he put his phone in between into the into the case through the sweater. And then he can watch his phone by looking at the girl's back. Also, they're clearly not in school desks because they have what are very obviously WWE folding chairs that they're setting on. Also, the girl's hair keeps getting in the way of the video. I'm not really sure what the deal with that is, but whatever. Right, this kid's got a pen. He untwists it. And then retwists it. And now he's got a double-sided pen because he stuck it to another pen. And then he writes 5MC, probably for the logo of this channel. And now you have two flavors of pen in one pen. I never really... I'm pausing again. I never really got that because the time that it takes to turn the pen around in your hand always felt longer than just picking up a second pen, you know? And, like, I'm ambidextrous and I have some limited degree of ability to write with both hands. And maybe that plays into it because in some cases I would just, you know, take my left hand off the page and then start writing with my right hand. But like, that's not really a hack. I don't really feel improved by that. Anyway, this dumbass is trying to get an Apple brand iPad to stay upright. They stick towel hooks on the wall, on the brick wall in front of them. And then they can see their iPad and they've got Apple Notes open and it just says a single math equation in there. All right. Someone's got the kind of notebook with staples in the middle. They fold it over and then slip a piece of paper with a slit cut in the middle. And now they have what? I guess they've got like an extra piece of paper in there. Okay, someone's got a different notebook now, and they've stapled in some straps. It says, make today amazing. Oh, and there's an iPad in there. And then she starts taking selfies with her iPad, no less. 
Who takes selfies on an iPad? Also, it's very obvious she's taking... These people think they're being hidden? All right. Someone's hot glue. Hey, it's hot glue again, everyone. Someone's hot glued a pencil sharpener inside a Tic Tac box. And now all the pencil shavings go inside the Tic Tac box. Most pencil sharpeners come with those anyway. But whatever. Go off, I guess. All right. Someone's written Af America in the front of their notebook, and then they've scribbled black in the same... Okay, hold on. Someone just has a weird way of organizing things where they write something in a specific color of marker and then scribble that color of marker on the side of the page, wherever that is. Sure, I guess. All right, pink book. They put notes in there. Take a big old glue stick. Dog, why aren't glue sticks square so you can get the corners? Anyway... I hate these time lapses. They 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 glued a, a envelope that says notes into their notebook, even though you know that's what the notebook is for. And then they had a periodic table of elements printed out on paper, and then they shook it and then it folded. And like I hate how this channel handles time lapses because like they just don't want to show they don't want to show the thing, and they didn't think of anything more you know subtle, so they just show someone wiggling their hands over it. It's infuriating. It's stupid. Anyway, then they put it in their little note thing. Whatever. All right. Someone's got some fabric. They're marking on it in chalk and in inch marks. And then they're slitting those inch marks open with an X-Acto knife. And then they're threading a colored pencil through there. Yay. Um, is the pencil case not good enough for you, buddy? And then they roll it up. And then they hot glue a button to the side. And then they wrap a ribbon around it. And then tie it off. And now it's a large, unwieldy way to keep your pencils that isn't square. All right. Someone's trying to get their pencil to stay just like their pen does. So they hot glue a dang old little wire thing. Oh, God. What's the name of it? The little pencil paper thing. A little. It's wire. It unfolds. It's got a thing. It's how you keep papers together. I'm having a brain fart, and I actually still really haven't stopped that mental breakdown from last episode. Um, paper holder. I'm Googling it now. No. Oh, God, never mind. Anyway, that's how they stuck it to their... That's how they got it to stick to the notebook. All right. We've got some plastic. Someone's put a coloring book in the plastic. And now they're blowtorching an X-Acto knife. And they're cutting the plastic. As though that's the easiest way to do that. And now the coloring book will stay... Oh, Jesus, help me. I just saw someone take a bite out of a glue stick. It was like one of those, like, edgy transition things. It's someone taking a bite out of a glue, uh, out of a glue stick that's multiple colors. And their lips are, like, coral blue number five or whatever. All right, so someone's drawing on a little plastic folder that a sheet of paper is inside, and then they keep wiping it away. Oh, I guess it's like this is a nice way to not have to keep reusing paper. They have whiteboards in class, though. All right, someone's got a little a little stapler. And they've got the Wikipedia page for five-minute crafts. Print it out. But they're out of staples, oh no. Okay, so they cut two little slits with an exacto knife and then tuck the and then they tuck the paper into itself. And it says pretty strong. Alright, so they got a rubber band around a bucket and then they start putting uh, markers in there. And then they put glue sticks around that, and then they put Crayola brand crayons around that. And more markers, and then pencils. They tie it all up with a ribbon. And then they give it a little note that says, you color my world. I don't get it. I guess it's supposed to be a gift. Oh, no, you're an idiot. And you try to stack paintings on each other, even though they were still wet. You deserve it. All right, they unfold a little carousel of clips, and then they clip the paintings to that. Even though some paintings are so wet that they'll just drip if you hold them up like that. Hold on a second. All right. 
the trees. That's the sun, sure. They put their... Oh, my God. What idiot put their rainbow on the wrong way? This idiot has drawn a rainbow, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. That's not how rainbows work. And also, they've forgotten violet. God, dis disrespectful. And indigo, although I don't know if indigo is like considered a real color, you know? Game cubes represent, but also, I don't know how many people consider that like one of the true colors. All right, someone's written name, question mark. Oh, it's a teacher now. She's trying to figure out whose uh, papers these are because they didn't write their names on it. She just draws out a pretty little, you know, blackboard and then hot glue. Hey, hot glue. She hot glues some clothespins to the blackboard and then clothespins the papers in there. <sighs> yeah, I guess so. That's all right. Um, You know, I sure smack my lips a lot. Someone's doing that thing where they have a bunch of markers in the same hand. And then they just draw the same thing a couple times. But this time they do it to illustrate a sort of 3D effect. Which, whatever. You know, it's inoffensive. And then using a wet Q-tip, they kind of color it in so it looks a little more 3D. And then the third one is used as a shadow. I guess that's okay. Inoffensive. All right, someone's putting obnoxiously colored tape on a post-it note. And then they're cutting a slit in it. And then they wrote, ass, oh, a sign... Okay. And then they've tucked in a chip clip. Okay. Assign grade, main copies return, and grade first. So it's just, that's just the little the little thing. You know, it's it's how teachers organize things. Um, I would have thought that this would have been for students, though. I don't know how many teachers watch these videos. Most teachers have it figured out. Oh, that's just obnoxious. Someone ziplocked a little... Someone ziplocked a bag of Cheetos and then punched holes in it with a three-hole punch. Yeah, so there's just Cheetos in this three-hole punch little bag. Yeah, Cheetos, and then it, they switched it over to have your iPhone and then art supplies. And, like, yeah, that's what those are actually supposed to be for. But, like, your Cheetos will get stale. They'll get crushed because they're in a three-hole binder, so you'll just close the lid on them. Ugh, whatever. Here's a hack that actually isn't too offensive. Um, there's an ad playing about a webtoon. That's all right. I like webtoon ads because they just show me a little something interesting. Oh, this woman's getting hit by a car. She's being isekai <laughs> Nice. Anyway. Um, there's two cups. One says sharp, one says dull. One is full of pencils, the other isn't. Whenever you get a sharp pencil out, you just use it until it's dull and then you put it in the dull pencils. That's okay. And then you put it back whenever it's sharpened. And that's the last one. Cool. Um, let's take a look at these. Yeah, because it's totally okay to pull out an X-Acto knife mid-exam, says Ava Moore. Yeah, no kidding. Piglet's 82 video says, what kind of school lets kids watch stuff on their phone and bring knives to a test? You can change the grade in a paper, but that grade book is still going to have an F. Hell yeah, it is, uh, Alexander Crowfoot. Oh, boy. Yeah. I'd rather be caught cheating than with a razor knife in class. School hacks you wish you knew sooner. I can safely say that I am glad I didn't think that these were good ideas now or ever. Wooter Kramer says, this channel is literally teaching kids how to cheat school. Yeah, it, It's one of those things where it's like a lot of these. Yeah, it's two things, says A. Dimitri. It's 2020. Who's going to see the letter grade on your test other than you? Your parents see your grade online. Let me take the exacto knife out mid-test so no one's suspicious. Yeah. Like... The teacher, like, what kind of teacher wouldn't allow them to use notes, but would allow them to whip out a knife that probably, that obviously has stuff written in, written in it because they're looking at it as though things are written inside of it. Ugh. These are dumb. These are really dumb. Ugh. 
hey, that's 300 second crap, baby. I'll be honest, I'm a little disappointed with my day. Maybe it's because I woke up really late and it's already one in the afternoon. Um, but hey, even though I still can't get my brain to work and even though I still don't know how to play Dwarf Fortress and even though I'm still having trouble getting some of the other games I want to play for uh, my Let's Plays running and even though uh, Morrowind still has the jacked up aspect ratio um, I'm still having a good time I'm still doing okay it's not that it's a, not a big deal. It is a big deal. But I'm still surviving, you know? And it's one of those things where, like, I was having a bad day, so I just decided to try to make something. And not everyone has that luxury, you know? Not everyone is like, ooh, I want to go film something. I don't own a camera, though. You know? Like, not everyone has this luxury, but whenever you want to make something... It's always, I found that it's almost always a valid feeling. And another thing, there's a lot of ways to manage your own mental health, but I have found that of all of them, distracting yourself is kind of a stopgap, but hey, it works, damn it. And it's okay, you know? Right now it's lockdown, but that doesn't change anyone's mental health. Like, people don't have seasonal depression because of lockdown. I mean, bad example, actually. Tons of people do. But you don't get clinical depression because of lockdown. Um, it may highlight it if you, you know, have high functioning. Or, you know, it may just show that, like, you have really just been lucky enough to not have problems with it. Or you've been undiagnosed. And in times like this, it really shines. But, like, managing mental health is always something. And I have found that distracting yourself is a valid way to handle it you know don't think of it as permanent but it is valid you know and part of that's just because everyone's valid including you uh but hey the best thing that i have found during anything is just try to make something you know try to create and that's what i do i'm making this dumb podcast so i can distract myself distract others just have people who like the sound of my voice have a, you know, a liquid version of it that you can just, oh, you know, I want to distract myself. Just whip out some 300 second crap and just squirt some noise on you. And like, I, I like saying things. I like talking. I enjoy making things. It's why I'm Let's Playing Morrowind. It's why I'm reading dumb memes. It's why I'm making this show. You know, I enjoy the adventure of making things. And that's really what's been getting me through this quarantine. That I'm just making fun stuff. Or sometimes unfun stuff. I make something sometimes and I hate it. I look at some of the things I made, I despise them. I can't stand them. But hey, the important thing is that I look at them and I say, I hate that, but I made it. Now I have the power to look at myself and say, I'm never going to make that again. I'm never going to do that ever again. <sighs> and that's, you know, that's the power of creation. That you can really see the things that you like and the things that you don't like and you can make them. And, you know, if you make something you hate, congratulations. You have now learned a lesson, you know? Wooly versus another Let's Player. Well, I say another Let's Player like I'm a Let's Player, whatever. Um, you know, he's, he's been in fighting games for a long time and he's been in let's playing for a slightly less time. And he has this thing where like, hold that L, you know, hold that loss. But he's like, no, not that L hold that lesson, you know, hold that lesson. You just learned. That's the L the L is the lesson you learned. And like, I, I know that it's kind of just some sardonic dad crap who doesn't actually understand you to say, Hey, Every bad thing that happens to you can be a lesson. Don't take bad things that happen to you as lessons. But when you're kept awake at night by things that happened to you four years ago, you can start to take that as a lesson. Unless it's random chance and it's just a whole, it's just a, you know, completely snafu situation. I'm rambling. Um, I'm not even talking about 
awful life hacks on my awful life hack show now. I'm just rambling about my quarantine findings. Um, that's 300 second crap. Remember to make something, you know? This time it's not, you know, take a shower or, you know, take care of yourself. Just, well, it is take care of yourself. Make something, you know? There's been a lot of discussion about what to do actually during quarantine. And it's really up to you. But I have found that at least trying to make something has been completely valid for nearly everyone I see. And don't play RuneScape. It's not a game. It's a drug. And it's not one of the cool ones. Uh, that's 300 second crap, baby. I've been Alfred. Thanks for listening to me ramble for another 10 minutes about the school system. And another 10 minutes about making stuff during quarantine. Because that's really what's been fueling this craft addiction it's that i'm like what should i make during quarantine and what i'm hoping i'm making is other people happy um have a nice day i've been alfred